Welcome to the policy dialogue series of STPI in light of the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak. And the outbreak of coronavirus has exposed the fragility of labor markets around the world. This is likely to be the most expensive emergency in history in terms of jobs lost. And there are huge trade-offs between ensuring adequate health care for containing the virus, that is flattening the curve and keeping the economy afloat. And while everyone recognizes the people's protection comes first, the economic losses have direct implications for a country's ability to provide its health care, as well as affecting the long-term impacts in the course of social and economic problems. The challenge is huge and the uncertainty is high. In such highly volatile scenario, we need some deliberation on how the government of Pakistan can ensure the protection of people against the virus at minimum economic and social costs. So we need to decide whether now is the time to act fast or now is the time to make the policy right. And we need the deliberation of this panel on this. In this policy dialogue series, we aim to discuss the impact of mitigation efforts against the coronavirus on labor market of Pakistan. And we have with us a very eminent group of scholars who we've invited to discuss the likely costs that we expect in Pakistan's job market, especially the informal sector. Um, just to introduce our, uh, introduce our guests, we have Dr. Mehmood Khalid and Dr. Muhammad Nasir from Pakistan Institute of Development Economics. They have recently published Hello. a very insightful paper on the sectoral analysis of layoffs and the unemployment. Um, next, we also have Dr. Shamshad Akhtar, who is a well renowned development economist and former governor of State Bank and former Under Secretary General of UNSCAP and uh, the Vice President of World Bank in MENA region. We also have Mr. Shahrukh Mani, an economist from International Growth Center, joining us today from London. He is a public policy researcher and his work focuses on municipal finances and urban governance. And we also have Dr. Abid Soleri, who is the executive director of STPI and member of Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. Welcome to all our guests. And uh, to start off the discussion, I would also like to put it out there that we all probably know about the 1.2 trillion rupee stimulus package that the Prime Minister introduced yesterday. And keeping that in mind and um, the whole scenario in mind, I would like to uh, set, I, I would like to invite Dr. Mohammed Nasser to set the stage and tell us about the sector-wise analysis of layoffs and where do they see the projections and where do they see them standing in view of the lockdown scenario being observed in Pakistan currently. Over to you, sir. Well, thank you so much, Aisha. Uh, so, uh, as soon as this uh, whole lockdown thing started, uh, the Vice Chancellor of Pai, Nadi Mullah, wanted to uh, explore whether what's going to happen when we uh, impose this lockdown. Now, as we all know that this lockdown wasn't a complete lockdown all of a sudden. Uh, there were different stages. So, we wanted to see whether uh, what would be the impact of different stages or intensity of the lockdown because different provinces were experiencing different uh, intensity of the lockdown. Um, and then we also wanted to see what would be the impact on the most vulnerable uh, group of uh, employed people. So in this context, we um, did a quick analysis and uh, we also acknowledge the fact that if there is a lockdown, uh, even of a particular intensity, the employment impact would not be similar uh, across all sector. So different sector would be affected differently um, uh, from, a, from a different stage of lockdown. So in this context, uh, what we did, we uh, actually uh, created three stages uh, of the lockdown, uh, which we call the, uh, in, in the first stage, there is a, a uh, very moderate type of lockdown, then the intensity increase, that's the stage two. Uh, and then we move on to the third stage where the complete shutdown uh, of the uh, economy. Now, in, in that context, we when we started this work, we were kind of moving between stage one and stage two. Uh, and probably now we are actually closer to stage three. So what our um, analysis showed that, uh, if we, if we go for a first stage lockdown, there won't be much impact, but you will still get uh, around 
uh, 1 million uh, layoffs in the uh, vulnerable implied group. Uh, but if we move to a second stage of the lockdown, uh, the number of unemployed in this vulnerable group would increase uh, 10 times and it will move to 12 uh, million. In the case of complete shutdown, the impact uh, would increase and we would actually have 18 million layoffs uh, in these, um, in this vulnerable employment group. When we move to the sectoral analysis, we see that the uh, in a stage of complete shutdown, we would have around 6.4 million layoffs in the agriculture sector, around 2 million in the manufacturing sector, and then the other most hit sector would be the wholesale retail sector, where it would be around 6 million, and then transport and communication would be uh, 1.95 uh, million. In terms of when we look at from the other aspect, uh, we see that uh, from the uh, 20.27 million daily wage workers, we would have around 12.16 uh, million of workers that would be laid off and then 5.6 million from the paid worker by piece rate and work performed. And then we also have 0.6 million from the street vendors and 0.3 million from the family apprentice. So all in all in complete lockdown, uh, we would see around 18 million layoff. And this is probably the reason why the uh, prime minister was kind of reluctant to go for a uh, complete uh, lockdown situation. So th these are our basic analysis of uh, the sector wise um, unemployment that would be created in, in, in terms of uh, when we impose a different kind of uh, lockdown stages. Thank you so much for this overview. Uh, I will also invite Dr. Muhammad Khalid to tell us in light of this Prime Minister's package and uh, seeing that they have allocated rupees 200 billion for labor, um, how do you think these funds will be directed towards those who deserve this and how will the government go about identifying these groups? Uh, thank you, first of all, for asking us to <clears throat> share our views. Uh, well, if you, in the same report, if you look at the total magnitude of the loss, we have estimated some figures that uh, if we go up to the stage two, the total economic uh, loss in terms of the wages would be around 187 billion. So if you contrast the amount which has been suggested by the PM yesterday, about 200 billion, that comes close to our estimate of the total requirement but the main issue is that how are they going to target these workers now in that scenario the problem with the pakistan's economy is that uh, we don't have a strong formal sector uh, if we compare ourselves with the rest of the world it's more or less easy in the sense that they know at each destination how many workers are being employed so they can target them directly so but in case of pakistan they have to go with a mixed kind of an approach in which one would be to scale up the existing social safety nets, for example, the BASP. And we have been hearing in the news that they are uh, scaling it up in terms of uh, getting more persons into the net since they have got the national history. Then there are other networks as well. For example, the uh, Bethel Baal system, they are also proposing that they're going to increase it. But overall, if you look from the perspective of what is the exact policy, still that needs to be known. So we, for sure, we exactly we don't know that how and uh, how much effectively they are going to roll out it. There are different approaches to it. Some say that like SIN is asking for uh, mandatory registration. Now, is it the same as the means testing approach, which is worldwide applicable, but that will take time? And how many persons would be willing up to show? And uh, with the literacy rate and the communication problems with these lockdowns, how much that would also be effective. So still, it's a very unanswered kind of a situation. But uh, our recommendation is that there has to be a central policy. The provinces and the federal government, as well as all the entities, namely the NDMA, the uh, BISP, the uh, RSPN, and all other networks which are already functional in the field, has to come together only then they would be able to identify and exactly target the beneficiaries. Thank you so much, Dr. Memo. Just taking this forward to Dr. Shishtar, um, that as uh, it has been highlighted in the report that they've shared, as well as the stimulus package that we have, do you think that the central policy, like how do you see that coming about as the provinces are going on 
with their own um, policies and the center is saying something else. So how do you see uh, coordination among them? First of all, um, let me compliment you for organizing this session and confirm whether you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Okay. Yes, thank you, so, Dr. Sabha. Thank you. Welcome. Um, uh, um, I'm here more to listen to the evidence that has emerged, but uh, looking at the, at the package um, and the uh, federal-provincial debates, uh, there's no doubt, you know, I was attending a Zoom conference this morning, which is an international conference organized in, by the Chinese. And one thing was that came out graphically clear is that having a coordinated uh, policy approach uh, mechanism is uh, crucial for countries to be able to mitigate the consequences of this virus. Uh, now, obviously, um, in Pakistan, you do hear from what, and, and we can only rely on the on the television in, uh, or the newspapers. Um, it's quite clear that there are different approaches, uh, but perhaps holding that uh, constant and a reality, um, it's critical uh, to recognize that uh, magnitude of uh, this dimension requires definitely a federal action and provinces need to feed into it. But at the same time, the reality is that provinces and local governments um, are the closest uh, to the people uh, than the federal except in the capital territory uh, where the federal government operates. Now, uh, just telling you that uh, from the reality of Karachi, as I have uh, uh, surveyed uh, in, in car a few times, uh, the city is almost at a standstill. So uh, the people who were working, whether they are working in the formal or informal sector, except the ones that are fortunate to have video links to continue some, have a business continuity plan, everything else is almost shut. Uh, and given that this country has a large proportion of unpaid, uh, uh, sorry, not unpaid, but informality, that uh, uh, that activity is ceased completely, including the retail sector. There are only vegetable suppliers, there are uh, meat shops, uh, fruit shops uh, in localities that are open, even the medical equipment, uh, because I was trying to procure something and replace something, uh, those people said that the government's lockdown has really uh, caused a huge problem. So I think uh, the problem is that one, uh, I think it's very hard to know uh, what is the proportion of um, em employed workforce that we are facing and what are the challenges uh, that uh, people are facing? I mean, it's quite clear that uh, we don't have uh, effective systems to have uh, uh, not only just business continuity, but for us to be able to access basic uh, services or basic food items. So I think it's um, frankly uh, just judging by Karachi city, as you all know, Karachi cities is closely tied, is a, is a hub of our manufacturing activity, services activity, and it has very strong linkages. Uh, its value chain uh, with, um, uh, with the rest of the sin is quite critical for continuity of the business. So I don't know, I mean, I, I'm very impressed that you were able uh, to, uh, to assess uh, some kind of, uh, through policy simulation, assess the kind of uh, employment or unemployment impact. But I have to tell you, the magnitude seems to me underestimate. Uh, for one, when one, one looks at the labor force statistics, um, uh, people who are actively employed are probably higher uh, than what the, the figures that have been used. And also 
the people who could be classified as effectees that may not be uh, fully being reflected in our statistical records uh, are going to be very high with those engaged in the informal sector or self-employed who have who are not at all getting any wages currently um, is quite serious so now coming uh, to the package now there are certain elements of the package that are quite clear uh, handouts or whatever is talked about but you know we are and I'm, this will be my last point so that I can listen to others, is that, you know, we were in a crisis. Uh, one is, of course, uh, the global and the regional crisis that we were facing, but uh, our own crisis that we have been facing uh, because we went through a, a twin, uh, uh, the fiscal deficit as well as the current account deficit. So uh, we are baseline. Uh, is very um, is quite hurt and is challenging. On top of it, um, as we are correcting our imbalances, there is a huge amount of pain that people have been suffering. I don't know how much of it is felt in in Islamabad, but I can tell you it is felt out here because the purchasing power has been drastically impacted because of the ruthlessly high inflation uh, uh, interest rate of course is one component but every critical item of consumption or use because of electricity price exchange rates were impacted so we are already um, uh, our vulnerability uh, was very high and with this uh, i can tell you people who work for me the sample that i have that neither the husband nor the wife can actually move from uh, their houses. And, you know, these are people uh, who are uh, living on very low incomes, but the worst thing for them is that they are actually not connected with their workplace because the transport has been impacted. So I don't know uh, how this... Um, 200 billion will be frankly distributed because uh, people actually don't have the means to even uh, uh, collect uh, whatever will be generated and all these complicated things that we think we have set in place hardly cover about 6 million uh, people if we are lucky. Our financial inclusion system doesn't fully cover. So I'm actually quite concerned that we don't have informality effectively tracked and we don't have an effective estimate uh, or location of who's where to be able to come to rescue i'm going to stop here i actually don't see the government stimulus package getting to the to the really vulnerable people is my last concluding point and second i think the interest rates cannot continue the way they are or for that matter, the prices cannot continue the way they are. They are going to continue to be high and the salaries continue to be low. The take home pays are going. So we really, our fiscal stimulus is going to be uh, very limited, frankly, given our fiscal position that we have. If you look at the US, you look at all the developed or even Indonesia that we had participants, Korea, we had participants. We, we are a non-starter, frankly. <laughs> That's, I don't want to sound uh, too alarmist, but I actually think we, uh, we need to think hard. We need to get the, 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 the provincial and the local governments to be the delivery mechanisms going forward. I'm going to stop here. I haven't done any research, for which I apologize, but I'm just telling you from my gut uh, feeling and serving people around. Thank you for inviting me. Over to you guys. Thank you so much for your intervention, Jad. That was very useful and very uh, valid as well, the concern of identifying people who are um, working in the informal sector. And just taking that on further okay. to Sharok, um, I'd like to take your um, take on the the stimulus package and also you had some views about the 
fisc package and the uh, the um, amount being increased from 2000 to 3000 how effective do you think that would be in actually uh, improving the conditions of people or saving them from the current crisis uh, thank you for having me this is quite uh, interesting to hearing everyone's thoughts uh, seems like all my meetings have been uh, converted into covid-19 meetings so it's virtually a few times every day just thinking about this um, and it's interesting is how much uh, at least here in London and when people are thinking about the crisis and how much of this attention is paid to how whenever developing countries like Pakistan are uh, because the conditions uh, the policy levers governments here are talking about are uh, impossible to implement there so this is uh, starting by saying that this will have to have a very strong multilateral element to it uh, the response to this crisis eventually um, oh, this is this is Sorry, Did someone say something. Oh. Um, uh, and also, this is um, this is all incredibly uncertain. I will start by clarifying that because uh, I don't know what's going to happen, and I'm, uh, I don't think most of us do. Uh, it's all guessing in the dark right now, so we don't really know how much the virus will spread and how the governments are going to react and what kind of impact that's going to have uh, over the labor market exactly then we can have informed guesses but that's pretty much it um um coming to your question um so the pro the problem centrally is that there are two sets of markets to need to intervene into and you have the formal sector and of course i'm simplifying a lot here and you need to target uh policy to on with different aims and purposes the formal sector, I presume the formal firms, which you have information that are ties to, you need to make sure what, what the government would want to make sure that they don't fire people, they can continue to pay them, despite having essentially uh, a resource constraint now, because if, if labor can't move, as Dr. Shamsha was saying, go to the offices or factories, you're not going to produce that product or service. Uh, some people might be able to work remotely, but that's not going to happen for majority. So despite that, you want people to continue to get some form of wages, uh, so um, they have some purchasing power to cover the basic necessities, but also you don't want firms to collapse. If your firms collapse, you put up a transaction cost or some sort of an additional cost once uh, the virus goes and you need to rebuild firms. And that's going to be, that's going to have an, an additional cost. So you want firms to stay intact with their business knowledge and their expertise and their net supply chains. Uh, and for that, there's going to be a very different package. I'm not so much worried about that because uh, at least the bigger firms have a lot of lobbying power and and it seems like they will be able to grab uh, a lot of resources from that. Um, then you have where the majority of employment is, uh, roughly 70 percent or something like science, is the sort of the informal sector. And that's where the problem is, uh, largely because you don't have direct mechanisms of support. You don't uh, know where they work, the firms aren't registered, the micro firms, they're self-registered, daily wage workers, people uh, who are verbally contracted, um, how do you make sure that they have uh, enough money to feed themselves and essentially don't die of hunger? Uh, and for that, uh, for that where BISP comes into it. Now BISP, of course, has a few problems from what I understand is that um, uh, uh, it's more ruler than Melbourne. Uh, the, relax the targeting will have to be far more relaxed, more people can move into it. Um, and then on that point, then you, from what I understand is that the best way would be with an unconditional cash transfer, because uh, if we do utility stores, if we do uh, uh, targeting for any other mechanisms, there will be far more leakages. There will be leakages in uh, unconditional cash transfer too, which is what this is largely, um, but uh, it would be less so. Um, but then that needs to be substantial. Uh, moving from 2000 to 3000, I don't know, will cover a lot of wage losses. Um, I haven't heard on how much relaxation of criteria of this response is going to be. And if more people want to register for it, or more people have moved into that threshold because now uh, they can't go out and make money, um, how are they going to actually register when if they can't leave their homes? So there needs to be far more uh, thought going, going into Maybe there is, and it hasn't been communicated publicly yet. So um, um, I, I will leave it at that. That, uh, that there are, there are two different sets of policies targeted in formal and informal sector, and I'm I'm more worried about the informal one, which you will have to target directly to people. But the formal one, you can I think you can do it via firms to make sure those ties. Thank you, Dr. Shamsha. Uh, 
Thank you so much, Sharuf. And uh, rightly said that the, it is the informal sector that we need to be concerned about. And uh, just taking that forward to Dr. Abid Soleri, and uh, I would like to take his comments on how does he see uh, this package can be implemented and what are what can be the mechanisms through which we can reach the people who need these um, funds and the help that the government is offering? Uh, well, uh, thank you, uh, Aisha. First of all, uh, let me thank uh, Dr. Shamshad uh, Abdur, uh, Shah Rukh Wani, and uh, uh, Khalid Saab for uh, joining us. Uh, of course, uh, your wisdom, uh, collective wisdom, uh, that means a lot to us and uh, will uh, definitely try to make the best use of it uh, through our policy recommendations. Uh, I've uh, also requested uh, someone from uh, BISC to join us. Uh, the, I think, yes, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Vakash Razi has uh, joined. I can see uh, that he has joined. So I've uh, uh, requested uh, uh, Mr. Vakash Razi, uh, Implementation Manager of uh, National Socioeconomic Registry uh, from BISC to uh, join us and uh, update us on uh, uh, the BISC related aspects of uh, uh, Prime Minister's uh, package. I thought while we are discussing, it's important that uh, we should try to get uh, some uh, insider information. And uh, Mr. Sharazi would be speaking in his personal capacity, of course, uh, uh, not uh, giving the official uh, version. Uh, so before I go on, and I, uh, perhaps I'll uh, leave uh, my thoughts uh, you know, towards end, uh, the question. Uh, uh, Shraya sir, better we wanted to ask uh, uh, you, and uh, we have been joined by Dr. Shamshad Akhtar Saiba, uh, Shah Rukh Wani uh, from uh, London, he has joined us, uh, Mr. Mahmood Khalid from Pite uh, University, he has joined us, and some colleagues from STPI. Now we are talking about the Prime Minister's package, we are talking about the relief announced by 150 billion for the poorest among the poor and the 200 billion for uh, daily wages. Uh, uh, and we wanted to know that it was enough. Uh, jo, uh, uh, package announced the amount uh, that was announced in the package. In your opinion, with your targeting, how many people can cover it? And the other thing is that the one mechanism that I had in my opinion was that the mechanism that I had in my opinion was that the BISP's existing beneficiaries hai, उनको तो आप पेमेंट कर लेंगे वो ऑलरेडी आपने आइडेंटिफाई किए हुए हैं लेकिन जो डेली वेजर हैं जो बिस्क के एज सच उसमें नहीं आते हैं सोशल इकोनॉमिक रजिस्ट्री में एक ठेले वाला एक रेडी वाला एक स्टीप वेंडर अगर हमें उस तक पैसे पहुंचाने हो तो उसके लिए क्या इस वक्त मैकेनिज्म डिवाइस किया गया आप थोड़ा सा क्या हम इस पे एजुकेट कर सकते हैं आप uh, many thanks indeed, uh, Dr. Saab and all the participants. And uh, I'm, I'm obliged for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts with the participants. And if everybody is comfortable in Urdu, I'll be uh, then responding in Urdu. And if the otherwise, is, is some of the participants are more comfortable in English, then I'll have to uh, share in, in accordingly. So you can remain off. Pardon? You can remain bilingual, just yes, after easy like Okay, okay. So, um, uh, as you all know, that uh, Benazir Income Support Program uses a, a targeting approach uh, that is one of the most sophisticated approaches in the world nowadays. That that is called a proxy means test, test approach, uh, in which we uh, we try to estimate the um, uh, the the well-being status of any family uh, through the proxy indicators so in in this regard we do not ask directly about the the income because uh, uh, say for example if my income is uh, 20 or 50 thousand rupees and i have 10 dependents uh, so my well-being status would be much more compromised than that of a person who is earning only 20 thousand rupees but there is no dependent on him so uh, there are multiple variables which together contribute in a poverty score. We assign them with a score from zero to 100. And zero means the poorest, whereas the, the uh, highest uh, score means uh, the richest. And in this regard, uh, we rank 
different families from zero to hundred on well-being status or if the if you call it from the flip side of the coin we uh, uh, not the well-being status the poverty status uh, it is uh, same uh, for 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 uh, for say for example my well-being status is also indicative of my poverty status as well so uh, in this regard we identify the 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 uh, population or we identify the poor through a scientific approach called uh, proxy mean test approach and we use the poverty score card uh, which is uh, the tool the question here for the survey uh, your question was very valid uh, that in, in 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 case of this emergency response many of the daily wages would not be included in the social safety net of uh, Benazir income support program, or they would not have been identified through the proxy test. Yes, it is the case, but uh, uh, let me share that our previous uh, uh, coverage for Pakistan is for the 87% households of Pakistan. It is not actually the 87% uh, households of Pakistan. We have actually covered 93% households of Pakistan because 6% were those during the survey who opted not to be part of the survey because they thought that they were so well off that they and they, they didn't want to be part of the program so this was uh, this is uh, one indication of uh, the uh, comprehensiveness of the database we have so we can say that uh, as per the data of 2010 11 we have covered 93% households of pakistan Whereas uh, uh, from the data uh, we have collected so far, uh, we have uh, made our estimations on uh, the targets uh, set by the census 2017, which is not a, a very old story. And you all know that the average household uh, annual growth rate in Pakistan is less than 1.6%. Uh, so we, 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 we are quite confident that the estimates we obtained from uh, the uh, Pakistan Bureau of Statistics about the number of households in 2017 are still relevant, and those are uh, those are our targets uh, for for the coverage. In this survey from 2019 till now, we have covered 40% households of Pakistan. So we are benefiting from both of the databases. That is 97% coverage from 2010-11 and 40% uh, coverage from now and we are combining both of the databases uh, for 40% of the people which are matched from previous database and the current database we are updating their poverty scores because we also know that because of the demographic profile change because of the time factor change the poverty score fluctuates and since there is high density uh, of the population um, along the cutoff line so we believe that time factor is quite valid and the fluctuation uh, does have a very uh, significant impact on the individual status of uh, at household or family level so we are quite confident that our data is uh, updated and it is relevant and it covers about 90 to 93 percent population of pakistan uh, the rest 7% is our coverage gap, which we'll also try to reduce uh, in this time. But in addition to that, as you have rightly mentioned, that uh, uh, we have we, we might not be having uh, the database for, for, for daily wages. But there are again two segments uh, within the daily wages. Many of the daily wages do uh, uh, have uh, a low poverty score as per the Nazir Income Support Program's poverty scorecard, and they are included in our program because it is not about the profession. Whether I'm a doctor, whether I am a daily wager, whether I am uh, not working anywhere, I am unemployed, it is the current status of mine and my family uh, which is uh, which which uh, matters for Benazir Income Support Program and on which the proxy mean test approach is applied and a poverty scorecard is assigned. So it might not be the case that the daily wager would be excluded, uh, especially from uh, Benazir Income Support Program social safety net uh, since they are working. It is not the case. But keeping in view the exclusion error, which every repository of the world 
uh, does have uh, an inclusion and exclusion error. We are cognizant of the fact, and that is the reason that we have uh, 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 augmented uh, this uh, current support. Then more than uh, two to three million people will arrive from district governments. They'll be identified through deputy commissioner offices and from rest of the offices, and they'll, they, they'll ar arrive from the local governments. And local people will be involved in their identification. And, and, and through this, they will also be included uh, in the current support uh, provided by the government of Pakistan to, to, to cope up the shock uh, uh, by the corona pandemic uh, in the uh, lowest two quintiles uh, of Pakistan, people belonging to lowest two quintiles of Pakistan. Yes, please. Pravid, your mic is off. If you can unmute yourself. So, Vakara, I wanted to uh, know that uh, the recommendation that you will be getting from deputy commissioners, would you be verifying their power to score card uh, score? Uh, Doctor, as you know, it's an emergency response, and uh, um, uh, we will not, we would not be having the time to uh, conduct their survey through door-to-door -door survey or to have desk-based registrations, as we have already closed the desk-based registration centers. You know that uh, because no, of no, the I potential. To, I meant to say that if I give, if I give you a list of 10, 10, 10 persons from your existing database, yeah. will you be very Will you be checking their poverty scorecard? I am a deputy commissioner. Definitely. Yeah. I'm coming to that. Uh, the reason of uh, providing a quota to the deputy commissioners is that, that those people who are not identified through Benazir Income Support Programs Social Safety Net may not be excluded from this uh, support. So this is the primary reason of providing an additional quota to deputy commissioners or to local governments that they will be identifying some additional uh, poor families which will be made part of the uh, social safety net for this emergency response cash transfers and we will be applying few checks on them so, so uh, say for example if a deputy commissioner of district x has provided why numbers of uh, of uh, identified families to to Benazir Income Support Program? We will be having some of the matches uh, matchings of of the data with our databases. We'll match them initially with our database. Uh, that if some of the people are already available in 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 in, uh, in BISP database, then we'll refer back uh, the district government that you may. Uh, send the proportionate uh, amount of the additional households so that they may also be included in the cash assistance. We will also compare them. Uh, we'll also have a matching or a check uh, from uh, different uh, different databases as uh, we'll checking them from the foreign travel database, from from uh, some of the databases of government employees and some of the databases of uh, tax returns and rest of the things so that to make sure that this money actually reaches the poor. Yeah, thank you. Aisha, if you have uh, the three experts, if you have a question for them, then you can ask them a question for them, so that they can clarify or they want to comment, and then we can go ahead and move on. Do we have uh, uh, Dr. Shamshad? Yeah. Gee, um, right. Um, uh, I think before I get into the recommendation, it's useful to take advantage of a car sub. You know, they have very well explained it. So, my question is that if 90 percent of our population uh, has been um, surveyed, or you have data based on them, what is the actual number of people that you have? on your roll call kyunki jo hum sunte hain wo bisp ka number to 7 8 7 million maximum hai kitna hai jo aapki website pe wo to purana brief hai wo kuch aur number de raha hai ji vakar wo jo score jo hai aapka threshold ke aap kis score tak dete hain agar aap usko thoda sa explain kar de ji main explain kar deta hu bahut shukriya pehle to main aapko ye batana chahunga ke hamare paas jo डेटाबेस है 2010 की आरा का उसमें हमारे पास 27 मिलियन हाउसहोल्ड का डेटाबेस है 
यानी हमारे पास डेटाबेस तकरीबन पूरे पाकिस्तान का है या पाकिस्तान के तिरानवे फीसद घरों ने रिस्पॉन्ड किया जिसमें से 87 परसेंट का यानी पाकिस्तान के उस वक्त तक के घरों के सतासी फीसद घरों का डेटाबेस हमारे पास दस्याब है नंबर एक लेकिन आप जानती हैं कि वो तमाम घराने जो है वो पुअर नहीं है और वो आ, हमारे आइडेंटिफाइड बेनिफिशरीज नहीं हो सकते उनमें से हमारा जो कट ऑफ करार पाया था वो सोलह इशारिया एक साथ था 16.17 एंड बिलो वर आइडेंटिफाइड एज आवर बेनिफिशरीज और आप बिल्कुल रही हैं जी फ्रॉम जीरो एंड बिलो मे आई प्रोसीड जी प्लीज जी अच्छा क्योंकि सोलह इशारिया एक साथ जो है वो हमारा कट ऑफ था और उसकी गर्ज ये थी कि सोलह इशारिया एक साथ इसलिए हमने रखा ताकि पाकिस्तान के जो लोएस्ट टू क्विंटाइल्स के लोग हैं आपकी वो आवाज रही है आपकी है? आ, शायद ये कुछ मैं कोशिश करता हूँ दोबारा मैं तो नहीं, 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 ये पता था कि ये आपके था आपका जो लोएस्ट लोएस्ट है है एक तो उसका और दूसरा नंबर नंबर में दे का प्रोपोर्शन था में दे में ना दे इस वक्त अच्छा मैं आपका सवाल डिस्ट्रॉक्शन की वजह से नहीं समझ पाया जितना समझ पाया हूं मैं उसका जवाब देने की कोशिश करता हूं लोएस्ट टू क्विंटाइल्स का पहले आपने पूछा खालिबन जी मैडम शमशाह जी और आप जानना चाहती हैं कि लोएस्ट टू क्विंटाइल्स में कितने लोग रहते हैं या कितने परसेंट यस अच्छा बुनियादी तौर पे जी अच्छा मैं मैं आपको एक बात और भी बताना चाहता हूं कि लोएस्ट टू क्विंटाइल्स जो हैं पाकिस्तान की हो सकता है मुमकिन तौर पर कि जिस आबादी जो है वो लोएस्ट टू क्विंटाइल्स में ही रहती हो क्योंकि लोएस्ट टू क्विंटाइल मींस फोर्टी परसेंट और क्योंकि हमारे यहाँ या शायद हमारी 50 फीसद से यकीन ज्यादा पॉपुलेशन उसके तहत रहती लेकिन इसके साथ हमारे पास एक और लिमिटेशन थी और वो थी कि हमारे पास एनुअल बजट कितना दस्याब है तो इसमें लोएस्ट क्विंटाइल यानी जो बिल्कुल आखिरी क्विंटाइल है उसको तो मुकम्मल कवर किया गया अलबत् जो सेकेंड लोएस्ट क्विंटाइल था उसके भी कुछ लोगों को खास हद तक लोगों को इसमें कवर किया गया मैं जब आगे चलता हूँ तो मैं आपके साथ वो फिगर भी शेयर करूंगा सत्ताईस मिलियन हाउस होल्ड में से सोलह इशारिया एक साथ और उससे नीचे सात इशारिया सात मिलियन फैमिलीज करार पाई यानी सतहत्तर लाख फैमिलीज ऐसी थी जो कि सोलह इशारिया एक साथ के थ्रेश पर थी या उससे नीचे थी अब हुआ ये कि उन सोलह इशारिया एक साथ के नीचे वाली सात इशारिया सात मिलियन फैमिलीज को बेनिफिशरी करार दिया गया लेकिन बेनिफिशरी बनने के लिए एक प्री कंडीशन थी कि फैमिली में से किसी एक शख्स के पास या जो हमारी बेनिफिशरी वुमेन है उनके पास एक वैलिड सीएनआईसी होना बहुत जरूरी है और जब हमने ये चेक रन किया तो हमें पता चला कि वैलिड सीएनआईसी के साथ जो हमारे पास फैमिलीज हैं वो एज ऑफ टूडे 5.2 मिलियन फैमिली लाख फैमिलीज को इसीलिए हम आज भी बेनजीर इनकम सपोर्ट प्रोग्राम की तरफ से जो हमारा अनकंडीशनल कैश ट्रांसफर है वो हम उनको प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं नंबर एक नंबर दो जो बाकी फैमिलीज थी 5.2 से 7.2 के दरमियान जो दो मिलियन फैमिलीज बनती हैं उनमें कुछ हमारा डेटा का एरर भी था जैसे कि मैंने आपसे अर्ज किया कि जब ये सर्वे हो रहा था तो लोगों को बहुत अच्छी तरीके से यह अंदाजा था कि वो अगर अंडर रिपोर्ट करेंगे अपने एसेट्स को या ओवर रिपोर्ट करेंगे अपने मैरिड वुमेन को क्योंकि एवर मैरिड वुमेन का क्राइटेरिया था तो हमारे पास कुछ इलाकों में बहुत माइनर एज की बच्चियों को लोगों ने मैरिड लिखवाया जबकि उनके सीएनआईसी भी नहीं बने हुए थे तो इन दो मिलियन में वो बच्चियां थी जो हमने मुख्तलि फिल्टर्स लगाए और हमें पता चला कि ये दर हकीकत अभी फैमिली का स्ट्रक्चर नहीं बना और ये फैमिलीज एग्जिस्ट नहीं करती एज एन इंडिविजुअल फैमिलीज या सेपरेट फैमिलीज तो हमारा जो बेनिफिट है वो मैक्सिमम गया है आज तक 
टू और एक दफा फाइव पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन फैमिली तक अच्छा अब मैं आपको बताना ये चाहता हूं कि uh, 2010-11 के डेटा को 10 साल तकरीबन होने वाले हैं और इंटरनेशनल प्रैक्टिस ये है कि नेशनल जो रिपोजिटरीज हैं जो नेशनल रजिस्ट्रीज हैं सोशियो इकोनॉमिक्स की सोशियो इकोनॉमिक रजिस्ट्रीज जो हैं वो पांच से सात साल के बाद अपडेट की जाती हैं क्योंकि डेमोग्राफिक प्रोफाइल की वजह बदलने की वजह से मसलन अगर किसी घर का एक ब्रेड विनर है वो किसी वजह से बीमार पड़ गया या खुदा न खासा वो फौत हो गया तो वो फैमिली अचानक से उसका स्टेटस जो है वो नीचे आ जाता है लोअर मिडिल क्लास में ये रेजिलियंस बहुत कम होती है इसी तरह अगर किसी फैमिली में कोई बच्चा जो पहले पढ़ रहा था अगर उसकी जॉब हो जाती है तो उनका स्टेटस जो है वो बेहतर हो जाता है तो वक्त के साथ साथ एज फैक्टर एजिंग के साथ साथ जो है वो डेटा की रिपोजिटरी उस पर फर्क पड़ता है और वो उसकी रेलिवेंस कम होती जाती है तो हमने इस रिपोजिटरी को अपडेट करने का आगाज कर लिया हुआ है जिसके तहत अभी जो सर्वे हो रहा है उसमें हमने 40% परसेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान यानी 40% परसेंट ऑफ हाउस होल्ड ऑफ पाकिस्तान को कवर कर लिया और मजीद हम कवर कवरेज कर रहे हैं तो जिन जिन इलाकों में हमारे पास नया डेटाबेस मौजूद है वहां हम नया और पुराना दोनों डेटा को इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं ये जो अभी इमरजेंसी रिस्पॉन्स की एड है ये देने के लिए उसके साथ साथ जैसा कि मैंने आपसे अर्ज किया कि हम वो आइडेंटिफिकेशन भी यूज करेंगे जो डिप्टी कमिश्नर्स की तरफ से लोकल गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से या जो पार्टिसिपेटरी अप्रोच की तरफ से हमारे पास आएगी अलता हम उनके ऊपर जो है कुछ चेक्स रन किए जाएंगे पहला चेक ये होगा कि क्या वो हमारी डेटाबेस में एग्जिस्ट करते हैं या नहीं करते उसके साथ साथ हम ये भी देखेंगे कि कहीं उन्होंने गुजशत एक साल में फॉरन ट्रेवल किया हो इसका मतलब है वो उतने पुअर नहीं है जितना वो खुद को रिफ्लेक्ट कर रहे हैं या उन्होंने वो उसकी फैमिली में से कोई शख्स एक खास ग्रेड से ऊपर सरकारी मुलाजिम हो इस तरह के कुछ छोटे छोटे चेक्स लगाएंगे और हम इंश्योर करेंगे कि ये इमदाद जो है वो हकीकी मुस्तकिन तक हम पहुंचा सकें जी समझा डॉक्टर शमशाद आपको आवाज आ रही है बिकॉज उनका अभी मैसेज आया कि उनको आवाज किसी की नहीं आ रही फिलहाल टेलीफोन नंबर सो लेट मी नॉट ask more questions given that the connection is bad but let me just make four points before i lose everybody first of all just the broad picture is i think i have full confidence ke aap logon ka biz par ehsaas aap log chala payenge aur kar lenge from what i hear ke aapka frame bahut uh, uh, extensive hai uh, but main aapko ये फ्रॉम माय लॉन्गेस्ट एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ डीलिंग विद दीज अनकंडीशनल प्रोग्राम्स ये बताऊं कि सेकंड दे डोंट रीच इफेक्टिवली टू पीपल दे नीड टू रीच एंड आल्सो विद अस नॉट हैविंग डिजिटल सर्विसेज फॉर दीज पुअर पीपल वी आर अनलाइकली टू बी the ultimate beneficiaries but these are typical pro- to get to the problems and of course governments take a long time to solve these problems as a result when there are crises is we cannot really uh, deliver uh, the effective uh, amounts or for that matter effective support to mera iske bare mein ek overall uh, hai i mean this is not china i can tell you where social protection systems are much more stronger and aaj subah ye baat ho rahi thi ki china needs to be complemented for two things one is uh, their national statistical agencies are are of very high quality isliye jo reports thi covid ki wo badi accurately aayi hai us country se aur uh, uh, they also have a social protection system which is working at the ground level in an effective manner 
तो ये तो हो गया इस फैसिलिटी uh, का मेरे ओवरऑल व्यूज है आई एक्चुअली डू थिंक दैट जो रिकमेंडेशन इसमें ये है कि फेडरल प्रोविंशियल कोऑर्डिनेशन इज वेरी क्रिटिकल ठीक है आप डिस्ट्रिक्ट uh, कमिश्नर्स को पहुंच लेते हैं बट देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ नॉइस इन द ग्राउंड एज आई सी देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ पोलिटिसाइजेशन दैट विल हैपन ऑफ the funding so i think of the that is provided there is a lot of distortion uh, we really place. need to work on 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 this effectively thing is um, problem hai okay okay so we will not be able you won't be able to hear um uh, perhaps uh, um i should let other people talk because they will be able to access with less distortion so over to aisha aap kisi aur ko le le jinki um jinki awaaz theek se aap logon ko aaye thank you so much if you could just send these points uh to me in the email we'll include them in the policy brief and kuch to hame samajh aa gayi hai kuch jo bhi miss ho gaya we'll make sure that that is included as well Um, going to uh, Sharuk, do you okay. have any questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Vikar, for this. I think this is really useful. Um, I have few questions. First of all, I understand the criteria you are trying to explain is that the bottom 40% were eligible. but because of the funding restrictions you could cover the bottom 20% completely and some of the uh, like uh, portion of that um is that being relaxed a eh? and uh, that not only uh, on the score card uh, 17 point is relaxed a bit because it part because it's a slightly an outdated data set uh, secondly but the cnic restriction is that also being relaxed because that essentially will act as a proxy against uh, really poor people not for proxy against people who might be stateless uh, or would have other forms of disadvantages so is that being uh, it can like a one of um, sort of relaxation decision with the crisis right now um um the second is that what would be the practicality of it if my household has been surveyed in the nscr but i did not receive a card i did not register and i haven't received a stipend yet and there is a essentially a lockdown how will i be able to register uh, and now how how will i be communicating that i'm now eligible for for a for a for a grant through bisp and how will that logistics of that work does bisp have enough people to go to people's homes uh, take the information um uh, the practicality is uh, i would love to know about how they're thinking about this is a uh, third uh, uh, it is, it what is kind important. of <laughs> Uh, I would like to know that uh, what is the urban ruler uh, difference in uh, the date uh, in, uh, in essentially the BIC uh, residents? Because uh, what I understand from the crisis is because density is making it worse. So Karachi would be much worse affected than let's say a village is, uh, unless the cluster sort of reaches there. But um, how is that linked to uh, your data base? So I will I will stop there. Sorry about so many questions. Uh, no, 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 sure. So uh, I forgot few of your questions. So first one was about CNIC. So let me share that keeping in view the uh, the specific phenomenon of Afghan refugees in Pakistan, I hope all of you can hear me. Uh, uh, a careful estimate is there that there are only one percent families at family side at family level. without any cnic of all the family members in pakistan that that those cases that where a complete family does not have a cnic for even a single individual of the family or even a single member of the family is only 1% because if i don't have a cnic my spouse might be having a cnic my mother my father brother or anybody can have a cnic because otherwise 
they are not considered as Pakistani and while this special phenomena has happened uh, from last uh, so many years in Pakistan named the Afghan refugees people are more conscious and they 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 they, they have made their uh, made their CNICs moreover that Benazir Income Support Program's third party impact evaluation report published in 2015 says that Benazir Income Support Program has contributed in 63% women um, and motivating them to make their CNICs. So the expectancy of, uh, of expect, expectancy that the women vote is also enhanced to the indirect impacts of Benazir Income Support Program. So, yes, there is a chance that some of the families might not be having CNICs at family level, but the chance is quite minimized. Let's say, for example, two to three percent families carefully don't have the CNIC even. But we'll have to live with it because uh, all the uh, national socioeconomic registries in the world do have inclusion and exclusion error, and there is no repository in the world which can claim that we we, we can cover 100% population of Pakistan. But on the other hand, if we do not make the payment conditional to the availability of CNIC, the, 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 the cost is very high. We, we cannot then even uh, uh, put a bar on the people that how many people are taking, taking multiple benefits from, from a single benefit. That is again not suggested with a country like Pakistan with very limited resources and keeping in view the special crunch we are facing uh, um, uh, by, by this emergency situation in the world. The other question um, was about... Um, uh, I understand the CNIC point. Um, yeah. um, I won't dwell on that further, but I'm saying that uh, the criteria, uh, the poverty score criteria is another one, right? So 16.17, is that being relaxed? CNIC yes, this, in this has been relaxed too. It was previously 16.17 for 2010 yeah. and 11. For 2019 and uh, onward data, we have already relaxed that for 24.7. But for this specific uh, 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 support, we are considering the people with less than 32 score. Okay. But let us not compare these two scores. 32 is not identical or e is equal to the to the score of 16.17. They are two different yardsticks. For 2019, we had a yardstick of 24.67 or 24.6, sorry, which is which is which is thought to be equal with 16.17. But for this. Uh, uh, short term aid, we have relaxed it to 32 points. So the people with the score 32 and less will be receiving this aid. Thank you so much. Uh, before I move to Dr. Benmut Khalid and Mohammed uh, I would just like to ask as well how soon do we see these uh, resources or funds reaching these people who we are targeting? Because right now we are in uh, in the crunch time and we need to actually reach these people. Okay, they have been identified, but how soon can we see the action? Um, we have uh, we are all set. We have prepared uh, the databases. We have uh, run the queries. We have run the simulations, and we are all set. We we have funds with us, and we have our contracts with the telcos. Which uh, where we, we have POS machines, point of sales, or the ATMs. So so we are all set, and we believe that the amount will uh, be uh, the disbursement will be started in, in within 15 days from now. Uh, which is which is I believe that is the earliest possible response, keeping in view the constraints of Pakistan. Uh, Aisha, your mic is off. Um, I didn't Thanks get the response by the way. Um, uh, sorry, can you summarize what was the earliest? Aisha, can you? Because I can't hear Mr. Vakar. As, uh, as Mr. Vakar has highlighted, within 15 days, uh, the disbursement would start. Uh, we also have uh, Ms. Rabia Omaima from Lahore. And uh, considering the lockdown situation in Lahore right now, how do you feel that this package would be implemented? And do you have any questions as well? Ms. Rabia? 
So Aisha, I, I'll have to leave. I'm sorry because uh, I have to attend the meeting if you allow me. So I'll no longer be available for, for the session. So may I Thank you, leave, please? Thank you. I, I think uh, Dr. Khalid, you were asking something about it. Can you give them a response? Can you give them a response? Yes, please. Sir, I have a small story. As you Gee. and I are, we are reading in the newspapers that the provincial governments are also trying to provide some relief, and the federal government has thought about many ways. So, uh, would there uh -huh. be any integration of the households, uh, which would be getting the payments uh, from your channels and through other direct payments? Would you be able to integrate all of them? Acha, Mahmud Khalid sahab, is mein na do do tarika kar ekhtiyar kiye jaate hain. Pehla ye hota hai ki jisko aap benefit provide kar rahe hain, usko main benefit provide na karoon. Yani jisko provincial government uh, benefit de rahi hain, unko federal governments na dein. Lekin is emergency or crisis time mein, ham hamara uh, objective ye hota hai ki ham outreach ko maximize kare. अगर आप दोनों डेटा सेट्स को साथ रखें तो आपके पास वेन डायग्राम बनता है यानी जिसमें आप ये भी देखते हैं कि कुछ लोग ऐसे होते हैं जो सिर्फ फेडरल गवर्नमेंट की रिपोजिटरी में या रजिस्ट्री में मौजूद होते हैं कुछ लोग सिर्फ प्रोवेंशियल गवर्नमेंट की रजिस्ट्रीज में मौजूद होते हैं और कुछ लोग ऐसे होते हैं जो दोनों रिपोजिटरीज में या रजिस्ट्रीज में पाए जाते हैं तो इस जरिए से हम कवरेज को मैक्सिमाइज करते हैं प्रोवेंशियल गवर्नमेंट्स अपने बेनिफिट्स देती हैं फेडरल गवर्नमेंट अपने बेनिफिट देती है तो कवरेज मैक्सिमाइज होती है हाल बता कुछ लोगों को डुप्लीकेट uh, बेनिफिट्स भी जाते हैं मेरा ख्याल है उसमें कोई मजायका भी नहीं है क्योंकि जो एड हम प्रोवाइड करते हैं वो सपोर्ट एड होती है वो इतनी सफिशेंट नहीं होती कि फैमिलीज को काम ना करना पड़े और उनको वो एट देर ओन जो है वो उसी एड से ही चल जाए सिवाय इस एमरजेंसी सिचुएशन के तो इसका इम्कान जरूर मौजूद है कि कुछ बेनिफिशरी यहाँ भी एग्जिस्ट करते हों और वहां भी करते हों लेकिन इसको रोकना शायद इस वक्त लोगों के लिए और उनके हक में मुनासिब नहीं होगा डॉक्टर आबिद से मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी इफ ही वुड लाइक टू शेयर सम थैंक यू डॉक्टर मिस्टर प्रकाश आबिद जी डॉक्टर आबिद Ji, uh, shukriya. Uh, the whole purpose of uh, bringing in uh, Mr. Vakash Razi on a very short notice uh, was to uh, let him uh, address some of uh, the question that we had in our mind. Kis tarikhe se ye benefit jo hai logo tak pahunchaya jayega? Kitni jaldi? Aur government jo hai wo kis kisam ki strategies jo hai uspe amal kar rahi hai? Obviously, Pakistan mein jo ki ek universal social safety net ya universal सोशल uh, uh, जो सेफ्टी मैकेजम जो है वो अवेलेबल नहीं है और उसके ना होने की वजह से जहाँ जहाँ पे तो ये मैकेनिज्म है वहां पे तो आप या एम्प्लॉयड होते हैं या अन एम्प्लॉयड होते हैं पाकिस्तान में जो सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयड की डेफिनेशन है जो डेली वेजेस की डेफिनेशन है और जो इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर की में जो लोग काम कर रहे हैं यकीनी तौर पर उनको टारगेट करना एक मुश्किल काम होगा जो उन्होंने बताया है कि अगर ये अपना 24.6 से थ्रेश होल्ड जो है उसको 32 पे लेके जा रहे हैं तो शायद उसमें कुछ हाउस होल्ड जो है वो और आ जाए लेकिन अभी भी गुंजाइश मौजूद होगी बहुत से लोगों को जो कि ये सिस्टम जो है वो नहीं कर पा रहा होगा प्रोटेक्ट और उनके लिए हमें सोचने की जरूरत है आई थिंक वन ऑफ द रिकमेंडेशन डेट आई वॉन्टेड टू गिव के अपार्ट फ्राम गवर्नमेंट के सोशल सेफ्टी नेट हमारा जो अपना फ्रेंथ्रोपी है पाकिस्तान में इंडिविजुअल एज वेल एज जो फर्म लेवल पे चैरिटी ऑफ फिलथ्रॉफी उसको भी हमें एक्टिवेट करने की जरूरत है वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन इट वर्किंग इन केस ऑफ अर्थक्वेक वी हैव सीन इट इन 2010 फ्लड्स और इसको अगर हम कोऑर्डिनेट कर सकें भले इसमें इंडिया में लीड ले या इसमें कोई भी नोडल एजेंसी लीड ले क्योंकि होता यह है कि जब आप इंडिविजुअल फिलथ्रॉफी की रिक्वेस्ट करते हैं तो जिसके पास जो होता है वो लेके चल पड़ता है हमने फ्लड्स और अर्थक्वेक में ये देखा था तो अगर डिस्ट्रिक्ट के हिसाब से डीसी साहबान की तरफ से एक लिस्ट बन जाए कि उनको किस डिस्ट्रिक्ट में कौन कौन सी चीजें चाहिए और फिर वो चीजें प्रोवाइड करने के लिए जो हमारे जो वेल ऑफ लोग हैं जो फिलानथ्रॉपी करना चाहते हैं अगर वो गवर्नमेंट का साथ देना चाहें तो एक तो ये चीज है जो जिसपे हम काम कर सकते हैं दूसरा जो फर्म लेवल को रिलीफ देने का काम है मेरा ख्याल है कि उसको उनके टैक्सेस से हमें लिंक करना चाहिए कोई भी फर्म जो है 
वो कितनी उनके पे रोल पे लोग थे जिनको सैलरी दे रही थी और उन्होंने पिछले साल में कितना टैक्स जो है वो डिपॉजिट करवाया तो अगर हम उसको लिंक करके दे तो वो तो काम करेगा अगर हम टैक्स को इंसेंटिव बनाए तो वो तो काम करेगा लेकिन अगर मैंने पिछले साल में कुछ टैक्स नहीं दिया था या मेरे पे रोल पे पांच लोग हैं और अब मैं दस लोगों के लिए रिलीफ मांग रहा हूँ हुकूमत से तो वो गालबन जस्टिफाइड नहीं होगा वहां पर हमें एक फिल्टर लगाना चाहिए एंड हमेशा से हम टैक्स को पुनेटिव मेजर्स के तौर पे तो देखते रहे हैं लेकिन इस वक्त टैक्स को इंसेंटिवाइज करने के लिए आप फर्म को यूटिलिटी बिल में अगर कोई रियायत देना चाह रहे हैं कि उनको तीन महीने में कितना वो बिल पे कर सकते हैं या आप उनको कोई और किस्म की रिलीफ यहाँ पे दे सकते हैं तो डेट शुड बी लिंक विद टैक्स रिटर्न उन्होंने पिछले सालों में कितना टैक्स दिया और उसके हिसाब से उनको रिलीफ जो है वो हमें देना चाहिए सो दिस इज वट आई वॉन्टेड टू एड Bakia Aisha would be more interested to listen from our experts who are here. Thank you so much Dr. Abid for uh, putting these very actionable recommendations on the forefront. Uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Nasser aapka agar koi point ho. So what we can do right now is just to have two uh, recommendations each at the max so we can have a compilation and send it out to the policy makers as soon as possible. the uh mehmood khalid should i start uh, uh well from the experience of 2010 floods and uh, the 2005 i would like to first of all recommend that there has to be a central uh command system type of a operational figuration so that whatever operations are being carried out somebody should know so that uh, those areas which are totally neglected because of the outreach or any other uh, difficulty should not be left out this is the first uh, observation and the second one is that considering that this is not going to be a short term phenomena unlike the other natural uh, hazards which are often considered one time events this is something which is evolving over time so whatever decisions we are making has to take into account that we have to do it according to maybe scenarios developed for the short term thinking about long term and from that perspective resource allocation people's deployment lockdowns and all other things should be considered and from that perspective i think that providing or making the first priority is of the uh, food security component or the livelihoods of the people whatever is required for that that should have no compromise thank you thank you ma'am uh, khalid sir uh, dr mohammed nasir is he still there hello hello ji we can hear you ji ji sorry ye there is a power outage so i'm using mobile internet so, okay so um i do agree with dr shamshad ji that we that these estimates for the uh, impact on vulnerable employment these are actually conservative um so the stages the way we defined it is basically based on the estimates and uh, uh from the global evidence and from discussion with different uh, experts so there is no concrete uh, thing available there so we had to assume some Uh, we have to make some assumptions so uh, what we do agree that these are conservative estimates uh, we also see that now even in this situation for example in kp uh, and well we are in i do live in a, a, a area so i can see that there is still movement around and there are some people uh, for example the daily wage workers and others in this shutdown situation are also uh, still engaged in in employment so maybe when situation moves towards a curfew type shutdown Uh, and there is a fully full restrictions on movement uh, across like urban and rural areas uh, there will be more unemployment so that th- that 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 would increase and regarding the the targeting mechanism of course uh, bisp is is one of the mechanism but uh, in this ta- in this time we really think that uh, and really hope that there could have been a, a more efficient and transparent local government system and if we had had that we did that situation would have been uh, easier to easier for reaching out to the uh, people and um, 
providing them relief this situation thank you so much uh, i moved to dr shamshad but i just want to highlight that Ji. my my had also her uh, recommendations at the can you hear me and um, yes we can ma'am i'm just uh, you, i was just okay. summarizing so what Amar rather than rather than uh, me uh, trying to write anything let me just quickly make three four points one is you should move from go meeting to zoom that is a better techn technological solution for such meetings i was in the morning for three hours internationally 130 participants nobody fell off okay <laughs> let me tell you that maybe it was also the strength of the it there of China, but you know, I was using the Pakistani IT solutions here. Second, uh, yeah, I think uh, government needs to really move forward in a much more aggressive manner than what it is doing right now. We have to get this macroeconomic framework revisited completely with the IMF because IMF also has this 50 billion facility under which there are four or five different options available. I think there should be very intensive discussions with the fund and we need much bigger package to rescue our people during the lockdown phase. And on its part, the government needs to fast track the policy reform. Government may interest rates go. I have been a former governor, so I never speak on interest rate, but I am going to break my promise on this uh, to myself and say that I think the interest rates in the current environment and condition of the economy and what we will face further are very high. Beyond this, I think it's really uh, the analysis of the uh, uh, of the central bank that needs to be revisited because ye crisis pehle kabhi nahi aaya hamare paas macroeconomic crisis hua hai but is dimension ka disaster hamare mulk mein nahi hua abhi to allah ka shukar hai itni deaths nahi hui hain but you know pakistan mein under reporting bahut zyada hai to hame is magnitude ka problem ka pata bhi nahi chala hai ki kitna severe hai but ye jo government ne lockdown kiya hai Mera apni assessment ye hai, they know more than we know as Pakistani citizen. To us point of view se hume kuch drastic measures lene hai or interest rate is the most market based solution than doing these conditional crash transfers or bo or uska impact economy pe confidence building ke liye bhi baut massive hoga. Second, SME ke liye ye jo uh, humne ka hai, we have to really think how to support effectively SMEs. We have to get SME funding, but also we have to look at the debt profile of the small and medium enterprises. We have to also look at the issue of agriculture lending, because khuda ke fazal se abhi food supplies are I am seeing downloading uh, of wheat at the shops here. Um, this is urban center hai, uh, of a very high profile and very vocal people who are sitting here and very resourceful people who are phone call and they are asking for the shops. But we really need, and this is the price of the price, we don't know that the price of the price is very expensive. Hai. Mein abhi bhi, uh, jo, uh, hai, in shops, the supplies are coming from very high prices. Pe aa rahi hai. Or ye kana ke ji nahi hamari prices fix ho gai. Utility store pe 162 ki dal mil rahi hai. For God's sake, gharib admi sirf dal hi khata hai. Or isi tarah agar aap uh, uh, vegetable ki prices dekhen, ye bhi abhi high hai. We need to find modalities of price checks or price controls lagane chahiye. Or jahan pe bhi report aaye, uski, uh, um, I mean we need to go back to old techniques probably here or SME ke cases mein to hamara ecosystem hi nahi kaam karta small and medium lang lending ka uh, to hame is wahat 
बैठ के ये सोचना चाहिए क्या चीजें पाकिस्तान में काम नहीं करती थी उसको हम किस तरह ठीक करने की कोशिश करें ऑनलाइन भी ठीक कर सकते हैं हम बिकॉज अमेंडमेंट्स की जा सकती हैं लीगल रेगुलेटरी सिस्टम्स की ऑनलाइन और ईजिंग की जा सकती है बहुत सारी चीजें हो सकती हैं ऑनलाइन डिजिटल साइट पे भी काम कंटिन्यू किया जा सकता है और डिजिटल फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन को मैग्नीफाई किया जा सकता है हमें चाहिए हमारी इंटरनेट सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स की क्वालिटी को हमें इम्प्रूव करना चाहिए देर आर सो मैनी थिंग्स वी कैन स्टिल डू टू इम्प्रूव हमारे पास एम्प्लॉय एज ओल्ड ई ओ बी आई है वहाँ पे जो पेंशन मिलती हैं वो बहुत लो है वी कैन इनक्रीज दो देर आर सेवर विंडोज प्राइवेट सेक्टर में हमें ये कह देना चाहिए कि जो लोग ऑफिस में काम नहीं कर सकते इस वक्त बिकॉज ट्रांसपोर्टेशन अवेलेबल नहीं है उनको तनख्वाहें मिलनी चाहिए रेगुलरली और प्राइवेट सेक्टर में ये ना हो कि वो ले ऑफ करना शुरू कर दे क्योंकि प्रोडक्शन वहां पे हम क्या एडजस्टमेंट कर सकते हैं सो आई थिंक देर आर ऑफ पॉलिसी बट ने किए नहीं है और तो कहो के अभी तक हमने और मेरे ख्याल में ये को आप एडजस्ट कर दें या पोस्टपोन कर दें ये तो टेम्परेरी रिलीफ हैं ये कोई पता नहीं है कुछ लोग तो आज सुबह ये कह रहे थे ये तो एक साल तो कम से कम चलेगा डेढ़ साल तक तो वैक्सीन नहीं प्रोड्यूस हो सकती इसकी इस वक्त हमारे पास टेस्टिंग किट्स भी नहीं है ऑफ दी नंबर वुड नीड अब जो टेस्टिंग किट्स आई है वो टर्की से आई है कराची में सिंध गवर्नमेंट के लिए उसकी प्राइसेस आर की ग्रांट असिस्टेंट हो सकती है टेस्टिंग किट्स वेंटिलेटर लोकल प्रोडक्शन हो सकती है इसके लिए हमें कोई पोटेशन की जो प्रोडक्ट्स थैंक यू सो मच मौजम साहब कुछ कहना चाह रहे हैं जी थैंक यू आयशा मैंने काफ़ी डॉक्टर शमशाद अख्तर शाहरुख डॉक्टर आबेद महमूद खालिद नासिर साहब ने काफ़ी कम्प्रीहेंसिव जो हैं वो चीज़ें शेयर की हैं बट मैं इस तमाम गुफ्तु में और जो करंट सनेरियो है अरेंजमेंट का मैनेजमेंट का उसको देख रहा हूँ लेबर के हवाले से अभी शराजी साहब ने भी काफ़ी कम्प्रीहेंसिव चीज़ें जो हैं वो अपने सोशल सेफ्टी नेट के हवाले से और उसका जो पॉवर्टी स्कोर कार्ड है उसके हवाले से और अरेंजमेंट के हवाले से बातें की और वो काफ़ी मुनासिब तो थी उसमें मुझे अभी तक जो है वो जब मैं हुकूमत और सूबाई हुकूमतों के इंतजाम इस हवाले से देखता हूँ तो मुझे काफ़ी जो है वो वीकनेस नज़र आ रही हैं जिसमें रिस्क कम्युनिकेशन और कम्युनिटी uh, एंगेजमेंट के हवाले से एक बड़ी वीकनेस जो है वो नज़र आ रही है uh, जैसा कि अभी मैडम uh, ने भी बात की uh, इस इंटरनेट uh, प्रोवाइडर्स के हवाले से कि हर वो uh, गरीब आदमी वो मजदूर या हता के मजदूर ना भी हो वो मांग के भी खाता हो तो भी उसके पास टेलीफोन जो है मोबाइल फ़ोन वो ज़रूर होता है और उस पर टेलीकॉम uh, के हवाले से टेलीकॉम सिस्टर को ऑन बोर्ड लेकर उनको भी सब्सिडाइज किया जाए और अभी मैडम ने जो बात की ये इंटरनेट प्रोवाइडर के इसकी स्पीड जो है वो इन्हांस की जाए ताकि uh, हमारी जो डेटाबेस है उसको प्रॉपरली यूटिलाइज किया जा सके अब मैं अब बहुत से ऐसे एरियाज हैं uh, पाकिस्तान के, के जहाँ पर ऐसी uh, डेली वेजर हैं और उनका एक एम्प्लायर है जहाँ पे चार पांच मजदूर काम कर रहे हैं मगर वो किसी भी जगह इनरोल नहीं है ना उनका मालिक जो एम्प्लायर है वो उनको किसी किस्म का कोई बेनिफिट देता है और ना वो बी के बेनिफिशरी हैं 
तो उनको कैसे एड्रेस किया जाएगा और एक और मोटी सी चीज जो मैं अभी कुछ ही देर पहले देख रहा था कि अभी तक हमारे यहाँ पब्लिक में ये मैसेज जा रहा है कि हमारे आ, जो रूलिंग क्लास है आ, मैं देख रहा था कि चीफ मिनिस्टर पंजाब जो है वो अभी कटीना सेंटर के दौरे कर रहे हैं और फौज सफरे मौज के साथ और बिल्कुल किसी ने कोई मास्क नहीं लगाया हुआ और बिल्कुल क्लोजली वो जो है वो मूव कर रहे हैं तो ये पब्लिक इसका मैसेज क्या जा रहा है और फिर वही टीवी पे आकर ये पब्लिक को कहा जाता है कि आप इकट्ठे ना हो इकट्ठे ना हो दूसरी तरफ मैसेज ये जा रहा है और ये बिल्कुल तोबा मेरी जाम शिकन और जाम मेरा तोबा शिकन वाला मामला जो है वो नजर आता है एक तरफ आ, हम हदायत कुछ कर रहे होते हैं दूसरी तरफ हम एक्शन कुछ दिखा रहे होते हैं तो जब तक आ, जो हम करना चाह रहे हैं वो अपने अमल से नहीं साबित करते उस वक्त तक अवाम से तो करना फजूल है और दूसरी चीज के ये बड़ी अफसोसनाक बात है अभी खालिद साहब ने भी ये बात की शाहरुख वानी ने भी ये बात की कि अभी तक हमारी तमाम प्रोवेंशल गवर्नमेंट जो हैं और फेडरल गवर्नमेंट और लोकल बॉडीज जो हैं वो सेम पेज पर नहीं है हर इदारे की जो है वो अपनी डेढ़ इंच की मस्जिद है किसी को ऑन बोर्ड नहीं लिया जा रहा लास्ट जो हमारी हुई उसमें भी मैंने रिश्क रिस्क कम्युनिकेशन की बात की कि अभी तक जो है वो इनको नहीं अंदाजा हो रहा कि जब किसी ऐसी सिचुएशन में हम लोग मूव कर रहे होते हैं तो उसमें हमारी कम्युनिकेशन का जो लेवल है क्या होना चाहिए इनको चाहिए एक सॉन्ग शीट जो है वो डेवेल्प की जाए जो टॉप टू बॉटम जो है उसका इंप्लीमेंट किया जाए अभी आ, कुछ वीडियोस ये भी चल रही थी आप लोगों ने देखा होगा कि पुलिस जो है उसको थोड़ा सा इख्तियार मिला तो वो शुतर बे मुहार की तरह लोगों को मुर्गे बना रही है लोगों के कान पकड़वा रही है और वो अपने एस एच ओ के जो है वो ऐलाना किए जा रहे हैं तो खुदारा पहले जो है वो एक पेज पे ले आइए फिर आप रिस्क को जो है वो मैनेज कर पाएंगे और बेनिफिट्स जो इनिशियली लोगों के डोर स्टेप पर खड़े हैं उनको इंश्योर एटलीस्ट कर दीजिए एक और रात भी मैं एक टीवी चैनल पे देख रहा था इस्लामाबाद के ये बिल्कुल पिशावर मोड़ पे एक सैलानी कैंप है जहां पर बिल्कुल बेचारे बेघर बे आसरा लोग हैं और रात यहाँ पे बारिश हो रही थी कि पुलिस ने वो खाली करवा लिया गया और उनको निकाल दिया गया उनमें से बेशतर लोग ऐसे थे जिनके पास कहीं जाने का किराया नहीं था ट्रांसपोर्ट बंद थी दूर दराज शहरों से थे तो हकायक कुछ और होते हैं इंतजाम कुछ और होते हैं तो कम अज कम हकायक की बुनियाद पर अगर फैसले किए जाए स्टेप्स लिए जाए तो वही इस आवाम को इस मुल्क को फायदा दे सकते हैं बाकी अपोजिशन और दीगर जमातों से ये कहा जाता है कि पॉइंट स्कोरिंग से अवॉइड किया जाए पॉइंट स्कोरिंग ना की जाए तो मैं नहीं समझ पा रहा कि ये पॉइंट स्कोरिंग नहीं हो रही तो और क्या हो रहा है कि जो स्टेप लिए जा रहे हैं वो से काम बहुत शुक्रिया बस मुझे पेश नजर रख के ही हमें अपने आगे बनाने चाहिए स्ट्रेटजीज शाहरुख डू यू हैव एनी लास्ट रिकमेंडेशन पॉइंट जस्ट वन और टू मिनट्स आई ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड यू हैव टू लीव फॉर अनदर मीटिंग वेरी सी um i will say four points uh, by the way this is uh, really enlightening and uh, i agree with virtually everything which has been said here um i will make four very quick points the first one is that this is a health response primarily um the and i understand this because pakistan is a uh, we are uh, we have problems on the macro front and the micro front and the economic challenges so we try to compound it a bit but if you if the government does not have a substantive plan to defeat or contain or mitigate the virus a uh, lot of economic plans won't be worth enough so pehla jo cheez hai wo hai ki sehat ka jo aapka public health epidemiology virology ka plan ke informed plan hai that needs to be there so it links to the second one and that needs to be tra- transparently communicated throughout the stakeholders uh it, it, one of the things which comes out of here jo mujhe samajh aaye ki there is a lot of confusion what the government knows or jo awam ko pata hai aur jo hame pata hai so that needs to be transparent in a manner 
and then of course that needs to be coordinated among the uh, levers of the government. Ab yaha, if we had local governments, uh, I know Sin does, but Punjab doesn't, and that's what 60% of the population. So waha, it would be much better and much more effective to tap into those local networks to respond to this crisis, but uh, unfortunately we don't. Um, the third point is that uh, the aim, at least how I see it, uh, perhaps a bit naively, uh, should be to protect jobs where possible and to protect livelihoods where there is not, right? So, and and that and that for that it requires to go a bit big. Uh, so, what we were hearing from Mr. Shirazi was uh, that there is some desire to expand BISP, but I think that needs to go quite substantially broad, and it needs to substitute any income losses uh, the informal or daily wage employees might have. So that includes more the depth of the engagement. So uh, if it's two, three thousand rupees a month, that needs to go significantly higher to 10, 12, 15 times something, which will be able to sustain their lively, uh, sustain their expenditure, uh, and also the uh, also the um, the reach of it. So more people need to be covered, uh, yeah. and that needs to be done radically soon. If we get 15 days money, so someone who is who the hari ka mulazim hai. Developing countries know that social networks are not going to be able to tap won't be able to tap into their uh, uh, families and households and extended clans to get the resources here. Uh, or for Sati, the uh, response part is that the uh, formal firms, and I agree with Dr. Abed about this. A, oh, we can't allow them to claim 10, 15 employees even if they don't have it. So that needs to be done uh, logically, uh, but the aim needs to be there to make sure those firms don't go under, so bankrupt now, and can, uh, they continue to pay wages. cash flow or we need to understand that there's a resource constraint. GDP, may, if, if you take the labor out of it, there's going to be a slump there. So the firms don't have access to their labor, then uh, you need to subsidize them somehow. So you need to pay them to cover up because most jobs won't be able to be done from home, uh, especially on manufacturing. Um, and coming to my last point is that uh, be sure that there's preparation for the next pandemic. Okay, they come every few years and there are health crises. So they, those you need to learn from this and then build upon it for the next one, which is going to come in maybe a few years or few decades. So don't, uh, um, don't sort of assume that once this is done, then that's it and nothing bad will ever happen. That's all for my side. Thank you so much, Sharuk. I think everyone has highlighted this point of uh, local level uh, engagement and local level coordination, and uh, that is one of the most important highlights of our policy recommendations that would be coming up. Just to wrap up the session, I would invite Dr. Abbas Ureri to uh, give a vote of thanks to all our participants and uh, also just conclude. Uh, thank you, Aisha. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Shah Sahib, uh, Mahmoud Khazi Sahib, uh, Shah Rukhwani, uh, Umayma, and uh, each one of you who joined. Uh, of course, we're trying to make the best use of our uh, online collaboration uh, and discussing. Different. Dr. Abid, if you could repeat your last statement. Uh, uh, policy issues and uh, then converting them into policy recommendation, which uh, we believe that STPI is in a quite uh, STPI is niche in a talking cabido cabinet meeting recommendations where in Pocha second in compile Kate away. The COVID series Kasamina that is the first. Uh, uh, second is come a webinar here. This comes at a frequent fairly terrible and we request, uh, uh of course, especially uh, ma'am Shamshat, uh, I'll the first time. Oh, um, uh, after this carry on the cap, I mean, right there is for a policy recommendations of me, they take it from relevant channels that one just like a boy should be out of the joint. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Abid. For great initiative. For great initiative. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ji. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.